There's the reality of the ultimate sacrifice. It's so close to home. At our house, he is the known. Sometimes you just gotta use the right thing. Hey everybody, welcome to That VoiceOver Podcast, the uh, show that is for and about voiceover. This is Mike Greco, and my guest today is a kind of kind of what you'd call a blue-collar working man's actor. He does everything from voiceover to commercials to uh, television and film, uh, and he is uh, currently the, uh, the lead character in the new video game Mafia 2. He is Rick Pasqualone. Rick, welcome to the show. What's up, Mike? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So you know what? Let's um let's start talking about the video game first. Uh, mm -hmm. Mafia Two. Were you in Mafia One as well? Uh, there was a Mafia One. It was done about eight years ago. Uh, I had uh, nothing to do with it, uh, which is why this game is uh, infinitely better. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it's obviously a hundred times obviously. better right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 start off obviously you must have auditioned for this just at the agency. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, they they had done an early round. This and this is going back well over two years ago. Oh wow! They had, they had done yeah they had done an early round of casting, and I went in um, and uh, read for Jack Scalise, who was directing the game and was doing a lot of the dialogue. And I did like he just put me in a room with a bunch of the uh, with a bunch of pages, and I just went through about twenty or thirty different you know characters, and uh, we kind of selected one which was, you know, kind of very close to my own voice. And he said, I think that's going to be good for Vito, who was the lead in the game. And I went, great. Uh, I really hadn't done a lot of video games up to that point. Didn't really know what it entailed. And then uh, we kind of went off from there. So how many, how many overall sessions do you think you did in recording the whole video game? Uh, you know, I think uh, I, I'd, I'd have to look, but it, it was probably in the neighborhood of 40 or 50, which is a lot. For a video game, yeah, I mean, usually, uh, you know, as you know, you know, usually you do these video games, you go in and you, you know, you do a couple lines from the script, totally out of context, and they kind of cut it together. What was unusual with Mafia Two was that there was myself and then two other actors uh, who you know, uh, Andre Filiuzzo and Bobby Costanzo, two nice. Two nice Irish kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what we all did, we went into a room at P.O.P. Studios, and they basically had us read through the entire script, and we just played every single character in the script. Um, yeah, well, what happened was they had written it originally in Czech. The, the game was developed uh, in Czechoslovakia. It was then translated into English by a British guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it then fell to us, the Italian American, the Italian American actors, that they could find to make it sound authentic and and you know and give it that give it that uh, Scorsese touch that uh, that people have come to expect. And over the course of two years, yeah, we 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 probably did forty or fifty sessions to get to get it to the point where it became conversational and cinematic and and dramatic. And I think I think that. Because of that process, it did turn out well. It's been getting a lot of good notices for the, for the, for the, you know, the real, the truth of the game. You know, the real, the cutscenes and the the gameplay is very realistic, and people have been responding. Were you speaking some Italian too, or is it just all, you know, the, the quasi Italian that the that the the you know the goombas use? Yeah, well, there was a lot of that. There certainly was a lot of that. Again, to give it that realistic touch, we we he allowed us to improvise a lot in the early sessions, yeah. which. You know, we were able to throw in our own personal uh, personal touches, but then at some point, I actually had to speak Sicilian in the game, which I had never spoke before. And they actually got a, a guy that, that came in, and I just duplicated his uh, his accent and and his pronunciations. And uh, <laughs> it was like I, I might as well have been learning Swahili because it was to me it was a completely different language than Italian. Because well, yeah, you speak you speak proper Italian because you're well, not I say speak, proper, I but speak, you speak yeah, Italian. like regular. Exactly. This was this was a completely new language, but uh, but I, and honestly, I haven't I haven't actually played the game yet. I don't know how much of that actually made it into the game, but from the cutscenes that I've seen, uh, they they threw in they threw, they kept quite a bit of what we of what we were coming up with. Was it already animated, or or were they reanimating things to your new dialogue? I, what they again because because the process took so long, and because they were animating and doing motion capture in the Czech Republic. We would record a bunch of scenes. They would send that dialogue over to Bruno in Czech Republic, and they'd get these Czech actors to approximate what we were doing. Then they sent it back to us, uh, and we would we would modify it, and, and, and they would work on the facial animation as we were going. They would videotape us in the booth, but so that they could get our you know our mouth movements and 
and try to approximate um, because they, their command of English was limited. So uh, they were trying to get it as close as possible to what we were doing. So and now you you've worked on other video games, and obviously the process is is completely different. I mean, from ones I've done, you just kind of go in, like you said, you read it and you walk out. And that's it. So. Pretty much, yeah. You get, you know, you get a four-hour session. You go in, maybe you do an hour or two of, you know, grunts and groans, and you know, <laughs> hey, he went that away. Okay, thanks, Rick. Thanks for showing up. Uh, <laughs> don't let the door hit you on the way out. Yeah. Was, uh, was there any uh, talk of a, a sequel? Or actually, I guess you probably would give away the ending if if you told me that you died, so you probably can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they uh, they they were talking about a sequel. Uh, I guess a lot of it depends on how well the game ends up doing. You know, if if. Uh, if 2K wants to, you know, fund another game, because I know they're they're incredibly expensive to produce, you know, at this level with the uh, with the motion capture and all that stuff, it, it gets very expensive. But uh, you know, I think it all depends on on how the audience responds. Uh, the reviews have been pretty good, uh, especially for the voice acting, which is nice. Um, I think uh, I think uh, if you know if it ends up doing well, there definitely will be a Mafia Three, and I think uh, and I think Vito would still be uh, you know have a, have a chance to be a part of it, whether in um, <laughs> I won't give it away. Maybe but. they're flashbacks. Maybe they're not it flashbacks. Maybe yeah. he's a little older. <laughs> Who knows? You know. Maybe he's. Who knows? <laughs> maybe he's Pacino. Now he's running the flamingo. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Vito in Vegas. Yeah. Part three. Yeah. <laughs> so I know. Uh, besides, uh, you know, voiceover, which uh, you know, you also have done some voices for Family Guy, and you were in. Uh, Ice Age, I think, one of the Ice Age movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do commercial work as well um, for voiceover, but you're also doing, uh, d- well, I guess just every kind of acting. You do on camera, you do commercials. I, I do whatever they let me do. <laughs> and, it, and it's actually something that, it, you know, topically I just, I just blogged about not too not too long ago is, is uh, you know, that top 5% of us that knock on wood are lucky enough to be, to be working. Uh, you kind of you kind of have to diversify. You can't really just do one thing or uh, anymore. I agree with you, and I think I think your blog was, was right on the money. Um, you know, early on, I think we all have maybe an ideal that we want to be a certain type of actor. We want to emulate, you know, um, you know, someone like Al Pacino or something. You know, who made whose first film was you know a monster success, and who's second and third, you know, and just became a movie star. And you go, yeah, I'd like to do that. But, uh, you know, you don't always get those those doors open for you. So I agree. I think you have to kind of leave yourself open to whatever as long as you keep working in the business and, you know, you're not, uh, you know, embarrassing yourself. Although I've done plenty of embarrassing jobs. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, I, I, have the I have the tape to prove it. You brought it up. What was the worst? What's your, what's your worst? What's the whole what's well, shame? I was just talking shame? about this one actually with one of my friends. The, 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 the highlight or low light of my career was I did um, – I did a job on uh, Days of Our Lives, and I was hired to, to do this character because they were in Italy, and uh, because I could speak Italian. But uh, at the time, I was too young to play the role. They were looking for a guy in his fifties. Uh, I got on set. They hired me sight unseen. They hired me. I showed up, and they had to. They put a mustache and they grayed my hair. I looked like Super Mario Brothers <laughs> had just stumbled onto the set of Days of Our Lives. It, it will go down in history as one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> so did you? Yes, did you get? Yes, I still have the tape. Oh, of course you do. That one. That one's. Yeah. You put that on Letterman when you that's, make it on there. Yeah, that's in the archives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you? Did you start in New York? I know you're from New York. Did you start in New York, or did you come out here and, and just go for it? Yeah, I started in New York. I think you and I came up uh, a lot in the same way. We did. Uh, I did theater. I was doing Tony and Tina's Wedding in New York. Oh, that's that right. That's right. I would have had I been in New York, I would have played your younger brother because I was Johnny. Exactly and Tony. right. We yeah. would have been uh, we would have been family. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's you know I started out doing the theater and uh, and and in that time in New York was also my first uh, venture. I was I was doing on camera commercials and that's when I also first started doing voiceover just by pure fluke fluke luck. It's one of those things. I was with a commercial agency uh, in New York and they said, um, Hey, uh, go around the corner. There's this Domino's you know pizza audition or whatever it was. And uh, of course you know didn't know at all what I was doing and of course I got the job because I was completely unprepared for it and uh, <laughs> that's what started me uh, what started me doing voiceover and thank God for that Did you ever have any kind of formal training in voiceover or were you just sort of taking your commu- commercial acting ability and, and just reading 
just reading it now. Yeah, I never, I never, really, I mean, I've taken classes along the way to try to, to, when I was working on specific things, for example, you know, doing animation, uh, you know, as, as you know, it, it, it's a very different, um, it's a very different aspect of voice. So, you know, there's, there's different things that you need to do and, you know, work on and just to create, you know, create those, you know, work on those different muscles that you, that you have. So I've taken classes for that and then, you know, and, and along the way, uh, but mostly I, I relied on just my regular, my, my acting training to try to just bring, just bring myself to, to doing voiceover. And, and the trend to me seems to be that, that every piece of copy I pick up says we don't want announcers, we want real actors and, you know, and it seems that seems to be the, the trend now. It's everything real, real, real and bring your own self to it. And, I kind of feel that's the way to go with everything. You know, you bring a little bit of yourself to it, and you know, no one, no one's going to be the same as you. So that and that obviously helped in you know for Mafia too, but also for the, some of the cartoon work you've done is is you've been able to actually use your actual acting training as opposed to just you know, hey, I'm a voice and I can read copy. Absolutely, and you know, it, it gives an advantage because there are those guys out there with those you know beautiful you know beautiful voices that can just go and read the phone book, and you go, that was fantastic. I you know, love this guy I'll buy anything he's selling and then you guys got to work a little harder <laughs> like me so uh, yeah so I think you know as much as as much of that stuff that you can bring to it and it's always about you know creating the, the specifics the who's the what the where's and you know all that all the training that you've done over the years to, to make that stuff real and it just I think it helps bring it off the page too was it hard for um, something uh, like Mafia too? was it hard to not uh, go cartoony with it because we all we all know the difference well I shouldn't say we all know but the difference between cartoony over the top kind of voices and and I think a lot of the video games are just going no no real 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 acting real 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 was it hard to kind of rein in or did, was it natural instinct just kind of take over for that uh, you know again uh, bec I think because this process was so unique you know we, we had the opportunity to be with other actors in the room other really good actors by the way uh, and the director was in tune with us enough to let us be you know in other words we you know you you do five six seven takes of a, of a scene and and he would give you you know try it this way try it that way but he would always let us do one completely on our own and and i think we always went for understated underplayed keep it real you know what would i really say if i was in a car with these two guys and we're on our way to you know, bury a body, you know, I don't know, you have to kind of create those situations, but basically you put two guys in a car and they're going to start breaking each other's chops, you know, and that's, and you know, and that's, and that's what we started to do. And that's the stuff that really brings, you know, brings the game alive when you're, you know, you're, you're going to rob a bank and you're talking about, you know, who farted in the car. I think that, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, that stuff happens. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. You know, it's a little, little, little bits of, little bits of magic. That's good. So you were, you were able to really just sort of play with everything and not, and not stick to, to, uh, the script, which is, which is, uh, well, it's unique. I, it, it hardly ever happens. <laughs> it hardly ever happens. I mean, and, and, and you know, they were very specific about about story, and they had really. Eventually, we 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 got the the dialogue. I think to be really well crafted and and really interesting story. Uh, it's not often. I think, especially with video games, it's all about blowing stuff up and you know how many cops can you shoot and you know kind of just beat this game in the quickest amount of time possible. I think the goal with Mafia Two was to get the players people playing the game actually caring about the characters and the only way to do that is to you know be a little bit emotionally invested in you know when whether they win or lose whether they die or live or you know real drama and creating you know drama out of conflict and i think that's always interesting to people have you uh told your on-camera agents when they called casting directors now to say uh, the star of Mafia Two uh, would like to audition <laughs> for Medium. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, you know that in a buck and a half, and I could ride the bus, you know. But it's, you know, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if that if that has anything to do with it. Uh, it's 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 one of those odd things that we have we we have uh, largely anonymous careers in the voiceover industry, and it's uh, it's not always it doesn't always translate. But uh, maybe this will. Who knows? Rick, thank you very much for uh, coming on the show and and talking to us about everything. And uh, w wish you best of luck in the future. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, buddy. Take it easy, man. Bye. That Voiceover Podcast is a co-production of Half Full and Get Creative Inc. For more information, go to thatvoiceoverpodcast.com or check us out on iTunes. Thanks for listening. I'm Mike Greco.